Hello again everybody and welcome to this coverage of Dartmouth High School football tonight. The Indians on the road, up the street in fact, as they're here to play at the Hugh J. Carney Stadium here on the campus of Bishop Stang High School. Andrew, this series goes back to the early 1960s. It used to be called the Slocum Road Rivalry when both high schools were on the same street. Since then the uh, Indians have moved out to Bakerville Road. But you can't take away the intensity of this game, the rivalry of these kids. It's been going on for years, and we expect quite a game here tonight. And this is a, uh, a tale of two different teams from last year. Last year, Dartmouth High School was loaded. Will Kelly was a quarterback, one of the best option quarterbacks uh, the Indians have had in recent years. They had a strong running game. And Stang had a very young team, Andrew. And uh, Dartmouth had its way with them over at the uh, stadium last year. Stang was very young. Dartmouth is exceptionally young this year. Only three kids returning to the program. Talk to Coach Golden. He feels pretty good about his team. A lot of those sophomores, now juniors. The juniors are now seniors. He feels he has a pretty experienced team. Absolutely. And when he talked to us before the game, we talked about the turnover game. They need to keep the ball in their own possession. They can't make turnovers. You know, they're Dartmouth and Stang kind of flip-flop. Last year, Dartmouth put it on them early. The young kids were staying. So hopefully this year, Stang's going to uh, return that favor. You have created us to strive for the best. Grant to all athletes, coaches, and fans strength to pursue excellence during this game and in all that we do. We pray for the safety of these athletes, protect them from injury and harm. And finally, we pray for your grace that you would provide us with the endurance to pursue our heavenly prize. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for our national anthem. Let's pause sung now by senior Josh for Powell, our country's senior national Lillian, anthem. Senior Maddie Azar and Junior Lily Suwana. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag You folks around the world, those were five young women behind us in the press box. That was fantastic, Andrew. That was very nice. It's a very busy press box, though. It is a very busy press box. We're in there somewhere. We want to uh, welcome everyone. I'm Jim Thompson. He's Andrew Thompson. Welcome to this live telecast of Dartmouth High School football. Opening game, both teams. As I said at the opening, Dartmouth, young and inexperienced. Stang, the more experienced team. Talking to both coaches. Seems like they're going to keep keep the ball on the ground. And as Coach Golden and Ricky said, can't make mistakes in this game because that could be the difference. Yeah, and I think Stang typically likes to hang on to the ball. Time, time of possession is their thing. They key, keep Dartmouth on the defensive side instead of the offensive side. They don't want to get into a track meet with Dartmouth. As Coach Ricky White said before the game, they're leaning their athletic on the Dartmouth side. 
they're going to get out and they can run. The big plays is going to be something that's going to hurt Stang if that happens this early in the, in the game. So the Indians will kick it off. Freitas will do the honors. Back deep for the Spartans. Jackson Tingley Prince. And Dominic Cavallo. Kicking off for Dartmouth is number two, Louis Freda. Hope you enjoy this contest. We're looking forward to it our first of the season. Paul Santos not with us this evening. Made other plans in. His loss. So Freitas is ready to go. And we are underway at the Hugh J. Connick Stadium. And they're going to let that kick go into the end zone. The Spartans will have the first possession of the game. They are led by their quarterback, Lucas Sincata. Luke is a pretty good ball player. You'll see Tyrone Gomes and Michael Golden out of the backfield. The wideout, Jackson Tingley Prince, along with Jack Durant. At quarterback is number two, Luca Sincata. Indians have a lot of fresh faces from last year's team on defense as Sincata brings them out. And the first man through, dragging people. That's Michael Golden. Oh, by number 15, Michael Golden, first contact. Jacob by Lancaster. In there on the tackle. I think that's what Sting wants. If they can have that time in and time out, four or five, six yards every time, then come out with a option or jet sweep somewhere along the line like that, that's what they want to do. That's what their game plan is. That's what they want to keep Dartmouth on their toes. Hit him inside and then bump it outside real quick. And they're going to get him in the backfield. Getting in there first with Donovan Burgo. That's a loss of five on the play. Lancaster in there as well. So that'll bring up third and about seven for the Spartans, their first series of the game. This is exactly how Dartmouth wanted to start and exactly how Stang didn't want to start. You don't want to put yourself in the third and long, first position of the season going against this Dartmouth defense. Tang sends two wideouts here to the near side. Sincata rolls, throws, over, shoots the Dartmouth defenders and falls incomplete. Jared Prince was the intended receiver. Nice play by Jared Abreu coming up to deflect that pass. Roll out pass, the Dartmouth defense was on that one. Short side of the field, scramble out for the quarterback. Nice pursuit by 65. Eli Johnson causing the breakup of the uh, Abreu on there. Bishop Stang in punt formation. Back feet to return for Dartmouth is number 23. Correction, number four, Chase Pino. Kick is high. Indians just going to let it Drop just across the 50, rolling down to about the 47-yard line. Well, Dartmouth High will have their first the possession of the game as the Spartans go the the out on uh, their first series. Dartmouth defense, uh, the last two downs came up strong. It's forced Stang to punt the ball away, and now we'll get a look at the new Dartmouth High School offense and Andrew. Last year, the running back was spectacular. Kelly at the quarterback. A lot of touchdowns those two kids had. And uh, six, Nico, Morris. Nico Morris is filling in this year for uh, Kelly. He's got big shoes to fill. Let's see how uh, Nico does. And Dammoth will start off with the jet sweep and the ball's on the ground. I think Dammoth High recovered. Chase yeah, Fenno like is the ball carrier. No gain on the play. On the Luckily, <laughs> Dammoth recovered that real quick. Nice play by number 21 on the defensive side by Stang. Aiden Cardoza. And we have our first penalty as well. 
A typical jet sweep for Dominic. Just a nice play by number 21, Ethan Cardoza. Aiden Cardoza. So we'll see if Stang accepts the penalty. They will. They'll match it off a dime. I'm Jim Thompson alongside Andrew Thompson. Welcome all of you around the world on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Dammit's looking at first and forever. Here's Morris. Morris gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10 for the Indians. Oh, nice chunk of change. on the stop. Nice chunk of change to get back after that uh, first down penalty. Nico keeping off that read option, hit the outside. Good blocking up front. Makes it a lot easier to obtain this first down with the second and 10 instead of second and 15, second and 18. Diamond look here by the Indians. Morris drops straight back. Here comes the rush. He avoids it. Looking for running room. He's got the 50 and it's going to be tackle there. Number six, Nico Morris. He's stopping the play by number 11, Jackson Tingley Prince. That was Prince on the tackle. And that was a nice open field tackle. Very nice on field tackle. Good play by Nico. Don't rush anything. I don't think is a you know your first time as a starter on first possession of your career. You don't want to do anything silly. Tucks it and runs. I think Ricky would be happy with that. Gain of five. Put him in a position on third and eight, third and seven to try to get a first down here and right at the 50. It actually was Dan Yazbek credited for the tackle there. Third and seven here for Dartmouth. Morris rolls near side, looks, and has two men out here in the flat. And it falls incomplete. And the Indians, first possession, fumble, recovered, a holding call, and now a punt brings up fourth down. So the rollout pass, you can see both guys, I think it was Fenno and, and uh, Martin, kind of in the same vicinity together. Didn't know who, who was going to make it to play, and it looked like uh, Martin went for it first, deflected off his hands, but you know, Dartmouth not afraid to throw it, apparently, in the first uh, possession of the game. Dartmouth in punt formation, back deep to return for Bishop Sang is number 14, Dominic Cavallo, and number 11, Jackson Tingley Prince. Tingley Prince and Cavallo back deep. Good snap, here's the rush. Wobbly kick far side. Takes a Dartmouth bounce, still bouncing inside the 20. And downed at the 15-yard line with the Spartans will have their second possession of the game. We have no score with eight minutes and 24 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Thanks for tuning in. We've got folks around the, around the world. We've got Mark and Michelle Devitt down there in Jacksonville, Florida. Mark, one of the first Hall of Fame athletes and who inducted into the Dartmouth High School Hall of Fame. We had a chance to see him as he came up to visit uh, two or three of his friends up here in Dartmouth. It was great to see the old man. Very nice. And I know Carlos Oliveira is proud to listen. I got you know, a little grief last year. I never called him out on a, to say hello from Florida, so your, your, your man Keyshawn says low, Coach O. Stang has it. First and 10 from their own 15. And they have a good run going here. A strong run out for a gain of 15 yards. That's Michael Golden. As he brings it up to midfield. And a first down. good for a Bishop Stang first down. This is the Stang bread and butter. Just give it to your big man and get up the middle and Push the pile, push the pile, and the Mike Golden's a big kid. We saw him on the field earlier. It's Coach, Coach Golden's kid. He's been around the game long enough. He knows what to do. Put his head down and go. Chase Fenno finally got him down. An inside hand up. That goes for a couple of yards. That was Gomes, the ball carrier. Picked up a couple. Josh Carrero and on the stop for the Indians. Same thing. I mean, that's a good play by Dartmouth defense. Stuff the hole. Make him, make him make a move to the outside. They don't let him get up the field quick. Louis Freitas also in there for Dartmouth. All spotted at the 35-yard line. Clock ticking here with just under seven and a half minutes to go. Opening quarter. Second down and seven. Jim Carter on the option. Picks up a couple. Ball carried by number two, Lucas Encana. He's stopped on the play by number 21, Ray Gramlich. 
Ray Gramlich. Nice play on the play. Nice open field tackle. After the game, it brings up Turpin Fire. Here's the head coach, good friend of yours, Andrew. The perfect fit here at Bishop Stang is Dennis Golden. Yep, if you want a guy who's going to you know, teach your kids the right stuff and on the football field and in life, he's one of the best guys around to do it. Third down, they're going to sneak it with Sin Carter, and he's going to be a couple yards short. Get it up across the 40, the 41 yard line. That's going to be a, about a yard Lucas and a half short. Brings up fourth down. He's stopped on the play by a host of Dartmouth tacklers. It brings up fourth and one from the Bishop Stang, 42. I don't know if Dennis Golden is asking for a timeout. He's out there talking to the referee. We'll look on. Just a big log gem in there. 22, Louis Freitas is in there. Uh, Jason Martin. So Stang will go for it. Fourth and short. Sin Carter hands off. First man throw. That's a first down. Get it by a yard or two. And there comes a flag, late flag. And a late flag, the ball carrier. Where's Michael Golden as we look on? Golden initially looked like he was going to get stuffed at the line, but just end up pushing through. Big boy, keep the legs driving. Popped out for that first down. Maybe we could take a look, Peter Chase, one more time at the end of that play. 15 yards marked off against the Indians. Let's play before. After the penalty is assessed, it will be first and 10 from the Dartmouth 42. Opening game, Andrew. Just like the kids on the field, everyone's got first game jitters. Sincata. Got it. Ball's on the ground and Stang recovers it. Michael Golden. Running back. The Very lucky there. Picked, picked it up. Staying. After the short loss, it'll be it's second and long. So only a loss of one on that play. Yeah, looked like Eli Johnson, Johnson got in there early for the Indians making that play. Way to stay home and tricky play there trying to make that pitch. Sometimes you're better off just taking it and living another down instead of trying to make that pitch to Golden. Didn't look like Golden was going to go anywhere either even if he did get that pitch. Second and 11. There's your quarterback, Sin Carter. Hands it off to Gomes, left side. Gomes gets down to the 40 yard line. It's going to bring up third down, and we'll call it 10 yards to go for the Spartans. I would assume, Andrew, four down territory. I would assume so. I don't, you know, it's one of these games where I don't think you know, a, a, a punt's going to do much good from this distance. And, you can notice on the replays and during watching the game, you can see Dartmouth's doing a very good job of staying home. They're not going for the ball fix. They're staying in their lanes, staying in their, you know, their discipline right now, and they're not getting over too, too over-pursued or under-pursued. They're staying right where they need to be on those jet sweeps on the outside. Oh, looked like the center moved. I think the center did the old Bob your head helmet move. Let's see if they caught him. Yeah, they did. The call is false start against Bishop. It's Colin Stang McCarthy, the center. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book, you know, Andrew. Oh, a little fumble ruski. Try to pick up a quick five. Now the Spartans are looking at third down and about 15 to go. Need the team a passing team. Well, Stain comes out with. Passing formation. They usually try to do a sweep here, but uh -oh. and they keep it on the ground. And the Indians do a great job. As Golden, maybe a yard. That's about it. Lancaster Martin. I think we're going to hear a lot of those names. Today. Those two guys have been flying around the ball so far in the first quarter of this game. So Fenno and Andrews back to return this punt here. Even if they punt it, I could see. 
a possible fake, but a little early in the season for that. Low snap, no rush. The kick sails down deep in Dartmouth territory and the return is back up and the Spartans kind of make the Indians start deep within their own territory. The clock is stopped here on the road at the Hugh J. Carney Stadium here on the campus of Bishop Stang. Two minutes, 17 seconds to play. I'm Jim Thompson alongside Andrew Thompson. Peter Chase directing this telecast and welcome you folks around the world live on yeah, YouTube. Nico Morris in there at quarterback. He hands it off, and go. it's a nice run here. Look out. This could go. It's going to go. Jared Abreu. Real estate ahead of him. It's Aaron Abreu. He's going to go in for a touchdown. Jared Abreu, excuse me. He goes 91 yards for the first score of the game. Well, as we said before the game, this is what Stang was afraid of. Dartmouth is athletic, and they're quick. See the inside hand, if he cut it, bounce out to the outside. Once he hit the outside, nice block by Graham White to get on a hand on, a, on the jersey there, and off he went to the races. Does that look familiar? Kind of looks like an Ethan Marks run from last year. It most certainly does. You don't think if you're the defensive coordinator looking at first and 10 from 91 yards away, that a kid that hardly played last year takes it to the house. Snap is down. Good. The kick is up. And the kick is good with just over two minutes to play from the Hugh J. Carney Stadium here on the campus of Bishop Stang. The visiting Dartmouth High School Indians take the lead at 7 to nothing. I think the whole crowd here, which is an overflow crowd, which is great to see up here in New England, Everybody stunned, including us. It was just an inside run. Bounce it to the outside. The, you said Graham White with a good block and off to the races. And he got here at midfield. He was gone. No one was going to catch him. And the good thing what the kids did from the Dartmouth offense is they didn't try to make a block. They didn't do anything silly, which in the years past, we see in high school football all the time, somebody does something which causes a you know, referee from 40 yards away will huck a flag and say, you know, there was a hole, there a block. Great job by those kids not to do anything once he got past the line of scrimmage. Once you got past in the secondary, just get out of the way, let him go. You can see the wide receivers there not trying to make a play, not doing anything silly. I don't remember Jared Abreu much from last year, but he does look pretty fast for yeah. first time playing in a varsity game. Or starting in a varsity game, I'm not sure if he did last year. We have two programs up here. One, he, he's got his first name on the two different names. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happens. Well, the Dartmouth one I printed out from today says Jared, so I'm going to go with Jared. Me too. And if it's not Jared, I'm sure we'll hear from somebody in the Hebrew oh, family. Whitey will be. Don't worry, he'll be. He'll be on the text machine. <laughs> Why do we have this break? I think it has something to do with the ball being. I, I heard the Dartmouth coach saying something about a ball being kicked over the fence. You know why we have this break? I want to say hello to someone special. You ever been to Charlotte, North Carolina? No. There's a wonderful woman down there. Her name is Monica Golden. She's in Charlotte. Husband Dennis. Special hello from all of us at Dartmouth Media. And for all the people here at Spartan Village, you understand you've been going through a few health issues from all of us at Dartmouth Media, all the people here at Spartan Village. you got a wonderful son, Andrew, and I love him. And we wish you and your husband nothing but the best. We hope you enjoy the rest of this telecast. So the Indians kick it off, and the Spartans will return it from their five-yard line. And what a 
solid hit by Jason Martin of the Indians. The Spartans advance it up to the 15-yard line. And a smash hit by Martin. First of all, running too high. The coaches are going to get him running too high. You know? Martin just with a perfect form tackle. Nice hit. That's like getting noticed. And a young kid trying to make a name for himself out here with all these former, you know, McCabe's, and you got all these great defensive players. That's how you get noticed. Jackson Kingley Prince took that ball from the about his own two. Thought he was going to have an easy cruise from there, but ran into a solid tackle by Martin. First and ten, Spartans now trailing seven to nothing. They wide it to run it to the near side, and they run Golden. Out of bounds for a gain of about one. Pursuit, pursuit, pursuit. That's what Dutton is doing right now. They're getting to the outside, not letting anybody get beyond them to the sidelines. Graham White, one of the guys in there, will look on at this defense. Will be second and seven from the Bishop Sang 19. Rui is in there, just jumping on him. He's a big boy. you got to get him and, you know, you can hit it down with the coaches. Pump your feet, pump your feet. It's the only way you're going to get Golden down if you, you got to stay with him. You can't try to arm tackle him. We'll give him another yard. We'll call it second down and eight. Look good on the stat sheet. Gomes and Golden in there with the running backs. And it's the first man through. Ball is carried by number 15, Michael and Golden. Michael He's Golden. The play. Golden's out to about the 24-yard line. We'll bring up third down and... A long three, three and a half to go. Tight formation here by the Spartans. And Solid run out here to the 40-yard line by Golden. They had him bottled up back at the 33-yard line. Broke away from the pack and picked up the first down. Like we just talked about, you can't arm tackle the Golden. Once he gets his legs going, he's a big boy. He's getting downhill fast. All arm tackles there. It takes a group to bring him down, but you got to get him. you got to hang on to him. you got to get him to the ground. Dylan Gomes was in there on the secondary tackle. First and 10 now for the Spartans. And this is Golden. Ball's by number 15, Golden's Michael Golden. going to pick up a couple. Looks like Mike DeFigurito's in there again with Louis Freitas. Well, we've come to the end of the first, well, of the first quarter here at the Hugh J. Carney Stadium here on the campus of Bishop Stang. A score at the end of one. Dartmouth High School 7, Bishop Stang High School nothing. And it's about what we expected. Absolutely. I don't think anyone thought this game was going to be a high-scoring game, but I think Dartmouth did what they wanted to do, keep everything in front of them. Don't let Stang get a long drive that's going to kill you on the defensive side. And on the offensive side for Dartmouth, I think they did what they wanted to do. You know, show some passes, show some runs, and then break one long. And that's what they've always kind of done in this kind of offense. They, they like to spring one for 30, 40, 50. We just saw one for 91 yards or 98 yards, whatever it was. So, I mean, I think if you're Dartmouth, you're very happy right now with where you are. And if you're staying, I don't think they should be feeling like they're not in it because they are, you know. This offense, you just saw Golden rip off a 12-yard run. They can easily score. They can easily make it a game real quick. See that moon over there? So romantic. And you're expecting your first child early October. Making one happy fella next to you a grandfather. Well, happy and sad at the same time. <laughs> Happy that I'm a grandfather. Sad that I'm this old. Well, I'm no spring chicken either, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> That's a story for off air. Second and short now. Here for the Spartans, they switch sides of the field. Actually, second down and eight. My bad. What a beautiful stadium. It is a very nice complex. We walked across the field. It's kind of different. It's the, the field felt softer than when you walk across the Dartmouth, uh, the Dartmouth turf. But it is very nice, and they've done a nice job here. And, you know. 
Never really walked across a turf baseball field before either. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. That uh, I can tell you, I was a student here, but prior to that, they used to have varsity basketball games back in the late '60s, early '70s. They would start at six o'clock, boys JV game, and the varsity games would start at eight o'clock. So the old Buttonwood Grill, which is now the uh, what do they call it across the street? Uh, Village Cafe. Val Village Cafe. That used to be the old Buttonwood Grill, and all the students would walk across mud between the JV and varsity games and come back uh, after enjoying a hot dog or a coffee frap or whatever we were drinking back then. Legally, I may say. And then we'd walk back freezing cold, walk up those steps and into the, uh, into the gym here at Bishop Stank. So this used to be a driving range. My friend Lori over here from the Standard Times, that's a trivia question. She can give her readers. At what time, at what point in time was the Bishop Stang High School field a driving range. Early 60s, owned by Ray Peck. Second and eight. Sikata has got room to the outside. He's got himself a first down and scoots. Inside the 45, oh, down to the 42-yard line, and the Bishop Stang High School first down. Nice play. Nice play on the backside. Uh, nice block on the backside by Michael Golden to kind of sprung him to get to that outside. And that's the kind of play that Dartmouth is, has to be afraid of. They have to be ready for. You can watch number 15, Michael Golden, on the backside here. Picks up that block right there on Mike uh, on Martin and, and springs him for about a 16, 17-yard gain. Nice play by Stang. Nice call. First and 10 Spartans, they trail seven to nothing. We approach the 11 minute mark here in the first half. Oh, balls, balls on, on the ground. Balls loose. And no official yet. They're gonna call it second downs. Late flag came in as well. There is a flag on the play. And Dartmouth coaches are beside us. We'll look on, I think the penalties against Stack. Talking to Golden before the game, Dennis Golden, that is, before the game, he was concerned about the ball uh, security. He said, you know, if they keep it on them, they got a shot. With plays like this, I'm sure they not a big fan of, but it's that part of the offense. You know, you get it, put it in somebody's belly, they want to take it. If the quarterback doesn't give it, it can cause some uh, confusion there. It will be first and long from the Bishop Sang 44. So they march the football back to the Spartan 44-yard line. They got to get it down to the Dartmouth 34 yard line to pick up a first down. This is now two drives for staying where they've killed themselves. They had a couple of nice plays and they've killed themselves with a penalty, putting themselves on a long second and 20 or first and 20, like the last drive they had. This offense is not meant for these kind of plays. Split backfield. Here's Golden. He's got room. He's across midfield, still on his feet. Inside the 45-yard line, down to the 44-yard line. Shredding tacklers along the way. Josh Carrero finally made the stop. Not before Golden. Golden is a big kid, as we've talked about this whole time. I mean, once he gets downhill going, it's tough to tackle him. First game of the season. I know these kids had some scrimmages beforehand, but seeing him come downhill the first game of the season is not, not an easy task for some of these kids out here in the secondary and linebackers. So now they're looking at third down, 10 yards to go. Solid run by Golden, who's a powerful back. Two wides at the top of your screen, Sid Cotter on the center. Indians jamming the line, and did they jump first? Flags everywhere. Everybody moved. I have no idea what the rule is anymore in this, with these new rules. I think the side judge has an offside Indians. Dartmouth definitely jumped first. So Dartmouth gives them a cheap Ball five yards. On third and 10, they... Oh, 51 knew he did it. Whacking his helmet. Tough for us game. Third and five from the Dartmouth 39.
You go back to Golden. He's the workhorse. Quarterback. <laughs> He's got himself a first down. Sincata on the keeper. By number two, Lucas nice play, good decision to keep the ball there for them. It's like the old belly series. That's right. So that game's good for a Bishop's Day. I will put it in your belly and I'll just follow you into the hole. And if you're staying, this is something you want to see. You were first, second and 20. You get that and two downs. Get a little momentum going. Plenty of time left in this first half. Timeout has been called Attention, please, with the on the field. Camaro, Clock is stopped at 9.07. 7 to nothing game. Please return to your vehicle. Your lights are on. Time with high over Bishop Stang. It's been an exciting one. 91 yard scamper. The only score of the game. Your vehicle, your lights are on. For the Indians. And I think uh, Ricky may have called a timeout. Looks like his. We've seen this with Rick over a while. Once the other team gets a little momentum in the running game, he's often done this throughout the years, just to settle his team down a little bit, give him a little breather. First game of the season, a lot of new kids out there. I like, I like the timeout. I mean, Dartmouth isn't physically big up front. And after this drive like this, they gave up some runs, trying to tackle Golden. Call a timeout, get a breather, get your legs back underneath you, take a deep breath, try to get a stop here, and, and you know. And that, that's the staying game plan. Yeah. Let's see if we can out physical them on both sides of the ball in the fourth quarter is a toss up. We should have the advantage. First down, Spartans. Sincata, he's got room. Sincata's still on his feet. Sincata's down inside the 10 yard line. He's dragged down from behind. So the Spartans starting to use the quarterback option, Andrew. Absolutely nice. Nice option, yeah, nice run pass option. Didn't give it a goal, and everybody's focused on golden, golden, golden. Smart play to Sincata to keep it, take it to the outside. First and goal from the four. Well, that's a replay from a long time ago. <laughs> they spot the football down at the four-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Spartans. Gomes and Golden in the backfield. There's Sin Carter. And off. And into the touchdown. Michael it's Michael Golden for four Stein yards out. Touchdown! The old bread and butter play for Stain, just give it a Golden. He's been chopping up yards this whole drive. The Dartmouth defense looked a little tired there. But somebody's down for Dartmouth, unfortunately. Tennis Golden. Odd thing in this game, but a very nice thing. Got a lot of family stuff going on here. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Ricky and Graham. Rick and Graham, uh, we talked to Coach White before the game. It's been uh, a fun time coaching his son, but it's, you know, it's same as Coach Golden said about Michael. It's one of those things where you don't want to be an overbearing parent. You want to be supportive. You want to be a coach, but you also want to see your son play well and do well. So, you know, at times, you know, Ricky said before the game, you know, he has uh, Coach Madden to kind of take over when, when things start to get a little testy at practice. Coach Golden, same thing. Coach Golden was funny talking about it before the game. Of, you know, he's the long snapping coach. Well, who's the long snapper for the staying? His son. He's the defensive back coach or linebacker coach. Coaches his son. So Dennis coaches his son in every aspect of, of, the, of the game. So it's, but it's nice to see, you know, both kids do know each other and both coaches are very friendly. So it's a nice thing to see both kids playing as seniors against each other. And, uh, you know, both kids have played from sophomore to a senior on the varsity, so it's nice to see both of that, those kids do well. Coach Golden has two daughters up at uh, Holy Cross. I believe that's where he went to college as well. And I said, how about Mike? What do you think? Oh, I'm not so sure. Got a lot of options. If you live in the greater New Bedford area like we do, 
And a lot of Holy Cross people. A lot of Providence College, Holy Cross, Boston College. Westfield State. <laughs> Westfield State, one of the all-time greats. Thank you for going there. You saved me about a hundred grand. You're welcome. Stang's gonna go to here to take the lead. Two-point conversion. And they run it golden, and I don't see I don't any sign no. yet. No. Didn't get Didn't in. Didn't get it. Nice play by the Dominic defense here to stuff that one. The two-point conversion is no good. So the clock stopped here at the Hugh J. Carney Stadium. Eight minutes and 20 seconds to go. We're in a 7-6 ball game. Indians on top. Nice play by 65 there. Eli Johnson making the first initial contact. Pumping his legs, keep the legs driving against Golden. Nice play. Beautiful weather up here in New England. If you folks in Dartmouth that are going to watch this rebroadcast on uh, Channel 18, Channel 9, both our stations, we're YouTube Live at this point, so we're really talking to people around the country and around the world. So we say it's beautiful up here in New England. Well, if someone's watching from uh, Louisville, well, they might want to know what the weather's like, so we'll tell them. It's 72 degrees. Beautiful night here in Dartmouth, Massachusetts. Here's the head coach of the Spartans, Dennis Golden. Kicking off for Bishop Sang is number 25, Zach Seleski. Seleski will kick it away. End over end kick here at the 20 yard line. Being returned by the Spartans, Martin. And Martin brings it up across the 30 to about the 33 yard line. Ray Grimlick in on the tackle. That's Grimlick on the return. It will be first and 10 from the Dartmouth 33. First and ten Indians. And they run it to the inside. They pick up three. That's Nico Morris on the on the carry on the carry. McCarthy on the stop. Oh, nice playing first down. Pick up about six or seven yards. And, you know, I think this is an important drive for Dartmouth. Keeps it on the jet sweep. Good blocking down field by the Indians, trying to get some momentum going here. Morris, near side. He's got room, he's got himself a first down as he crosses the 45, out to the 46 yard line. Gain of eight, the first down. Six, Nico Smith, he's stopped in the play by number 15, Michael Golden. That game's good for a target first down. Nice play by Golden. You can see a couple of nice blocks here on the outside. I think it was Jason Martin he put on uh, number 17 here. Gets him a little crease to get up the field, get the first down. And again, good job by Martin. Not doing anything where you're going to get a hold and just let him go. Once he's once he starts to move, these referees are going to throw the flag as much as they can. Just let him go. Nico Morris seems very confident out there. His first start as a high school player as he rolls. Now he's going to try to run with it. And gets back to the line of scrimmage and may picked up one. Tackled well, around the shoe tops. Six, Nico Smith. He stopped in the play by number 55, Colin McCarthy. Second down and nine. Nico Morris, he stopped in the play by number 55, Colin McCarthy. I think, you know, what they preach to, to Nico is if it's not there, don't force it, don't throw it. You know, it's still a game. You don't want to do anything silly. You don't want to get a tip ball, interception, get sting that momentum coming back at you. So good play. Look to see another down. Keep the drive alive. Morris 
Going to keep it again, and this time he runs right into the left side. Keegan Plant was waiting for him. Nice play by Keegan the Plant, staying home. Keep Call it third and a long seven, possibly eight. It's one of those plays you got to let that, you know, fig ride a little bit longer to, to try to get those linebackers off their keys, off their, off their discipline, and, and try to get up field quick. But, you know, it's, it's a learning process. Here's the rush, and it's a middle screen, and it's wide open. And the Indians have the first down and more. Fumble. And it falls out, and Stang recovers it. Number 14. That was Jason Martin. Jason Martin had a nice play, number 14 for Stang. Dominic Cavallo. Dominic Cavallo. Nice play by Dominic Cavallo. Being there, pursuit. It's really unfortunate. This was wide open. They've Dominic's run this play in the years before. Nice gain. Just one of those. Hey, number three, Tyrone Gomes with a nice tackle. Hat on, a, hat on the ball. Talk to both coaches before the game. If you talk to any head coach. Turnovers usually decide games. That was a big play for the Indians. And you got the defense right back on the field, and they seemed winded the last time they were on the field. Spartans just drove the ball down, got the touchdown, failed on the two-point conversion. Now they have the football from their own 40-yard line. Well, I guess the good news for Dartmouth is Michael Golden is on the sideline right now getting a breather because I'm sure he's gassed as well. Oh, they give it to the first Ball's man. Carried by number three, Tyrone Gomes. That was Gomes. He's stopped in the backfield by a host of Dartmouth tacklers for a short loss. Jason Martin was there for Jason the Spartans. Jason like maybe Second Mike Figueredo. Excuse me. Yeah, nice play by Mike Figueredo getting back there and getting past the line. Number 51 as well, Josh Carrero. Second and 10 now for the Spartans. Trailed by a single digit, 7-6. Keep it on the ground. And Golden back in there. He was the ball carrier. Picked up a couple. Third down and eight now for the Spartans. The clock rolling. 4.37 to go. We see Golden just gets his, put his head down and go and just force that pile up forward. Good play by Dominic to stay home. Again, reading the keys, reading the, the line, reading the quarterback, staying home. Sincata keeps it, pitches it. Indians come up defensively and do a great job. Nice play Solid by hit on Tyron Dome. Graham White, nice play by Graham White. Good for him. So Dennis Golden's got to send on the special teams. This is one of these plays they work on practice all week. Pitch man, pitch man, you're the pitch man. Nice play by Graham White and uh, also Chase Fenner to pursue and keep it on the outside. Nice play. From the Bishop Sang, 46. Andrews and Fenno back deep at their 25 yard line. Good snap. High, fire, fire, short fire. kick. Just get out of the way. It's well out of bounds right here in front of us. And if you guys or women watching over. this game and you play golf, that would be a duck hook off the first tee. <laughs> that thing just went dead left. The dreaded shank. So it'll give the Indians a first down from their own 30-yard line. They have the lead, just under three and a half to go. Last time they had the football, middle screen, big yardage, turned it over, however. And here they try the left side again, and they get running room, but plenty of room down the sideline. Louis Freitas. That's Louis Freitas. <laughs> Freitas has a first down and plenty more. They're going to mock him just across the 45 yard line. If you get a replay up here, you can see that Stang wasn't ready on defense. You can hear the Dartmouth coaches yelling. Nice, smart play by Dartmouth to get the snap off before anybody was really staying in there. 
Caused a little bit of chaos out there. Number three was out of position. Number nine was, was chasing. Nice play, big game for Dominic. That's what they needed coming off that turnover. Can we run that back again, guys, real slow? We have a timeout on the field. Looks like there's an injury cramp, yeah. maybe. Let's go real slow and just right, stop it right there. Stop it, stop it. No, oh, okay. Look how disorganized is Andrew's talking. Just back it up, there you go. Get back to the line of scrimmage and see how disorganized they are. Oops. There's no one on the line for three no yards. No one's on the line. Defense isn't set. Go ahead, roll it. Had four guys on the front four just completely boxed out. Uh, there was no one for eight to ten yards on even close to making that play. So the Indians get a big gainer on first down. Now they pitch it here to the near side. And this is Abram. Well, Gets back five, to the line of scrimmage. He may have lost it here. Hasbeck on the tackle. Yeah, nice play by Hasbeck. I mean, nice play by the Sting, by the whole Sting defense. Weeded out, weeded out, weeded out. Have nowhere to go. Nice, nice uh, contain there by uh, Yazbek to keep that ball inside so the pursuit can come. Morris, walking, throws deep, far side, overshoots his man. Back at coverage was Lucas Sincata. Jalen Adams, intended receiver. You'll see on the replay, you'll see Jason Martin, number 22, the shot man, wide open. Watch 22, top of your screen. Yep, no one's open, yep. We'll look at that in film and young quarterback put it in the back of his head remember it for the next time yep sometimes the big plays aren't always the best play in that situation you're second and long got to make the play try to get something back instead of trying to make one big play to get it all back third and 11. morris rolls pressure from the back side throws got a man caught along the far sideline and that was by Chase Fenno, but I think they're going to mark him short, but I see the officials Just being short. back here at the 45-yard line. The illegal man downfield, I believe, Andrew, is going to be the call. Oh, of course. Those referees, they'll find anything. Well, there's your illegal man downfield, probably 51. So oh, the last two offensive series, Dynamith has got something rolling. And then they shoot themselves in the foot, move the ball back inside their own 40. And they go to, got to advance it down to the Stang 44-yard line. So they're looking at After third the 17. Third yeah, you know, third it's two minutes to go in the half. You had good field position, it was a third in inches. You know, you're... The run game has been good for Dartmouth. That was very easy, but attainable to get. Now you put yourself in a, in a pickle here. Morris. We're going to chase him to the far sideline, corral him, and knock him out of bounds for a short oh, game. By number six, Nico Morris. The by number 15, Michael, Michael Golden, Golden number three, in pursuit. Gets credited for the tackle. This was going nowhere from the no, start. No, Golden has just been a... A nuisance in the backfield. Never gets up on the plate. You can see him chase it down. He's the do-it-all man for Stang right now. He's, you know, he messed that play up right off the bat and gave really Nico Morris no chance to even make a play downfield. So the Indians will kick it away. Prince and Cavallo back deep. And we have a timeout. So with this timeout, we want to thank the people from Dartmouth Media directing and producing this, this Dartmouth High School football game. Indians on the road. Opening game here at Bishop Stang. Stang has been great hoax. We have a great spot here in the press box. You can see the big crowd across the way. 
in front of us, the Stank fans. Great crowd, great weather. Opening of the football season. Nice, high, spiraling kick. Pick it up. And Pick that, it up. we're going to throw a flag. Did it hit a Stang player? No whistles, but a flag, and that looks like a interference on the Yeah, Indians. it looks like it hit number 13 off the back of the head before the Stang guy could even make a, a play on it. Marcus Andrews saying, what was that that hit my head? <laughs> it's one of those, but he's he was trying to do the right thing and just got too caught up and too close to the, the return guy. And I don't think... The call is kick-catch interference against Dartmouth. So they'll move the football up. 15 yards. Wow, that's a big play for Stang. That's better than a punt return in most cases. It will be first and 10 from the Bishop Stang, 46. Spartans just have over a minute to get a score on the board. And Cotto looks at a four-man front. He's going to roll to the right. The block of the and he's going to be tackled just back at the line of scrimmage. Good backside pressure there by the Indians. But JT Carrier with a nice defensive pursuit to the ball on that back, back end. And looks like Sting almost got away with a block in the up, back. Stang rushing to the line of scrimmage. They're going to roll to this side. And they throw, and it's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Jackson Kingley Prince. Jared Abreu there defensively for the Indians. Nice, nice play by Abreu there. Coming to the ball. It's twice tonight Abreu's uh, made a couple nice pursuits for the ball and making a defensive play. And he's had a very nice game. Tyron Gomes is injured here on the near sideline. Looks like he has a cramp. Yep. You get all like your dad. You get those cramps, but not in the football game. You get them like while you're sleeping. You got a lot to look forward to. Thank you. Third and ten. Deeper, Jason. Deeper, Jason. His golden blasting up the middle. Still on his feet. He's got a Spartan first down. Gain of 12. Sheer power. Hey, we got to get him off the field. We got to get him off the field. Just a simple all day long to golden up the middle. No one, no one good blocking up front. No one from Dartmouth was even there for a couple of yards. Going to throw it near side and... No one open. It's always tough to run to the short side of the field, one of those kind of waggle passes, rollout passes. And we've seen it for years. Team that just run, their passing game is basically a flood, right or left. Yeah, flood, yeah. I mean, two or three guys on the same side of the field you're rolling out to, and hope one of the two or three are open. Yeah, and the, you know, and if you have the defense, you know, how many times have you seen balls sail over the head of the intended receiver? Or, get deflected so you got to be on your toes if you're a defensive back you got to be ready for an overthrow abrams made a couple nice plays in the ball he's ball hawking tonight so if you're staying you might want to just kind of nothing crazy here for them keep the ball on the ground to go then maybe bust one sincata rolls right avoids the rush he's got room here to the near side beats an indian gets it down inside the 30 yard line graham white had a shot at him couldn't get him to the ground. No, but it was a nice, almost a game-saving, a uh, play-saving tackle by Graham White to slow his momentum down and let the pursuit from uh, Louis Freitas come from the backside. But he's slippery. I mean, I think Golden said before he does like the way his quarterback plays, and you know he's kind of slippery and you know, said something about his. He's got very fast feet. So. And we look here at the near sideline. Coach McGonagall. There along with the head coach. 
Dennis Golden. Clock is stopped here. We're in a one point game. I guess the question is, does Stang have a passing play that can get them 30 yards with 10 seconds to go? I think you put Golden in the slot. Just let him run a post. <laughs> well, the, the, the clock here says ball in the 45 yard line. That's not correct, but. First game jitters by everyone. <laughs> ball is at the 30, at the 27 yard line. Where it's first and 10. And only 10 seconds to go in the half. He moved. The guy that staying, 75 for staying moved early there. Sin Carter being chased and being sacked. And a flag. Nice play by Louis Freitas. And a late flag came in. You can see if they show, you can see on the replay. Oh, too late. The off, offensive lineman for staying jump for us. Face mask looks like by number. Hey, 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 So the referees are discussing. We have a face mask against Amath High School. So in this drive alone, they've had two major penalties. Yeah, that was a tough play. I mean, you can see on the back end of that play, uh, was it Louis Freitas or Jason Martin, one of the, the twos out there, uh, was trying to make the play in the quarterback and just got his hand a little too high. It looked like he got him on the face mask. And you can see here before the ball was snapped, number 75 jumps, doesn't get called. They got the face mask call, right, though? Do you know, folks, across the country, up here in New England, in this area, especially southeastern Massachusetts, they can't get high school referees. And each team this year will have a Thursday night game. Dartmouth's Thursday night game is next week against Greater New Bedford Regional Vogue Tech. We'll have that one broadcast also on YouTube. But imagine that. These referees, uh, not enough of them. And they have to do games Thursday, Friday, and Saturday afternoons. And a lot of these guys, um, if they can get a Division three, a Division two game up here in the New England area, they'll do it. So, you know, I asked the, I asked the referee, I said, why aren't people coming out? And he looked at me and said, you ever heard of the word parents? And I said, oh, I'm one myself. You mean when they yell and scream at you? And the guy said it's not worth the 75 bucks. Maybe a lesson to be learned there. It will be first and 10 from the Dartmouth 28. So they have one play left in them. Sincata throws it far sideline. He's got a man out there and falls incomplete. In the end zone, good coverage back there by the Indians. A nice play, was that a Brayu get back there? Dylan Gomes back Gomes. there as well. So we've completed one half of football here from the Hugh J. Carney Stadium. Our score at the end of the first half. Dartmouth High School seven, Bishop Stang six. We'll be back with all the second half action. See you soon.
Welcome back, everybody, as Bishop Stang will kick off to Dartmouth. And after this kickoff, Andrew will run down a couple of quick stats and a score as we enter the third quarter. Is Dartmouth High School 7, Bishop Stang High School 6. Short kick. Indians are going to let it bounce. And they pick it up on the hop. And advancing the football was Louis Freitas. Freitas took it out to about the 40, 41 yard line. But the Indians will have it first and 10. Andrew, quick stats. Quick stats. Basically, how the first half we thought the game would play out. Dominic with a big strike for uh, Jared Abreu, 92 yard touchdown. Uh, pretty much all, all on the ground for the Dartmouth Indians, 148 yards total for the first half. On the other side, uh, Michael Golden, uh, 86 yards so far with the one touchdown, 152 yards total for Bishop Stang. So pretty much what we thought we were going to get in the first half. Let's see what the second half brings. And it sets up with a run up the middle and a solid nine-yard run out to midfield. Except that was a Brayu. Nice hard run up the, up the middle. Good way to start the first half, get a little momentum. Second down, it's short now for the Indians. Abu doesn't touch it much, but when he does, he's got lightning speed. And trapped in the backfield is Abu. Perhaps back to the Off line of scrimmage. I think they're going to mark him just short. Gomes in there for the tackle for Stang. They're going to mark him about a foot short. Third down now as we start the second half. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a bigger loss. Abreu kept the ball, he kept his legs pumping. That last ditch effort to get back to the line of scrimmage right there got him back just short. Nice play by Tyron Gomes in the backfield. Is Abu near side? He's got the first down and more. He's got running move here to the near side. Here comes a late flag as he's tackled out of bounds at the 35 yard line. A late flag came in down here at the 45 yard line. There's a flag on the fight. Great block by Martin and Springham, and unfortunately, a costly penalty for the Indians. Let's see if we can pick it up here on the replay. Looks Holding. like it was caught out by Graham White right there. Just one of those uh, ticky tack, I think. Had him by the jersey, but the call is holding against Dartmouth. it's one of those things we talked about earlier on the, um, the Abra run that he sprung for the touchdown. And let him go. If he gets by, just let him go because these referees are watching. They've got the color gloves. You can see what's going on. Well, unfortunate for Dartmouth there. Dartmouth has had uh, major mistakes in this opening game. Make him back to haunt them. Well, they're young too. I mean, the coaching staff, you know, something they did say that the team is young, so it's a learning process for them as well. Here's Morris. Rolls right. Morris looking, still looking. He's going to be tackled for a big loss. That's Golden. That's Golden. Been all over the field here for the Spartans tonight. And again, you talk about, you know, Nico being a young quarterback, he's got to get rid of the ball. Just chuck it. Get, get rid of it. You know, you got to have that time in your head of, all right, no one's there. I can't run it. Just get rid of it. And, you know, now you're fourth and, and long. Ryan Oliveira, one of the deep men. Good snap, no rush, booming kick. Here to the near side. Gets a great dot and bounce, still bouncing. Down inside the 15 yard line, down to about the, uh, let's see where they're gonna mark it. Down around the 11 to 12 yard line. A little confusion there by the Stang boys. Again, first game of the year. It will be first and 10 from the Bishop Stang, 13. One of those low line driver kicks, you know. If you're not there to field it, it's one of those, who's going to get it, me, you. Luckily for Dartmouth, it rolls down to about the 11 yard line. So they switch field positions. Dartmouth had a uh, major penalty in that drive. Set him back. Golden comes in and sacks Morris on the rollout. The Indians get a fortunate break from their special teams as they pin the Spartans back deep in their own territory as Dennis Golden 
Looks on, talking to Sin Carter, his quarterback. We have an injured Dartmouth High player. Oh, looks like another cramp. Yeah. Can't see the number, but it may be the punter. I want to thank you people around the world, around the globe, imagine that. DCTV, we started out some 30 years ago with a one camera shoot, broadcast at Dartmouth High School Athletics. We've been to state tournaments, won state championships. We've traveled all over southeastern New England. And here we are, years later, live on YouTube across the world. So all you Stan graduates out there, we welcome you into this telecast. And of course, all you Dartmouth High graduates along the way, we welcome you as well, as long as, as well as current students, parents, educators. Great to have you alongside. So Stang now has their first possession of the second half. They trail by a score of seven to six. It's a quarterback keeper, Sin Carter. Nice play fake by the quarterback. Picked up two. Nice play fake. Look like Trying to slip out the back door the there. Way to stay White. home by Graham White and make that play. After the game, it will be second and seven. From the Bishop's Tang, 16. Anything Sin Carter and Gomes can do to free up Michael Golden may be the key here in the second half. Golden's been all over this field tonight, offensively and defensively. Stang's going to throw it out here. Quick screen. A lot of running room here along the near sideline. Going to be run out of bounds as Tingley Prince. Big gain of four. The Spartans run out of bounds at the 40-yard line. A little bubble screen pass there to the wide receiver out on the outside. All you got to do is make one man miss, and he did his job and got up field quick. Nothing fancy, just a nice play. Just, just as good as a run there for staying, and that's you know something they're not going to do too crazy on offense, throwing the ball. So it's a nice play for them, get the ball downfield and get out of their territory and give them some breathing room. Jared Abreu had a shot at him. Once he avoided Jared, he was off for a big gainer out to the 40-yard line, first and 10 Stang. Eight and a half to go. Sankata tries to run that same play as he did on the previous first down. This time the Indians did a nice job. Eli Johnson and on the stop for the Indians after a three-yard game. It's almost like a new little wrinkle for the second half stage coming out. A little fake counter to the, to the backside. Nice play by Eli Johnson to stay home and, and read the quarterback. Second down, we'll call it eight. Golden smashing his way out to the 48-yard line. It'll be short by about a yard. Seems like every time Golden gets the ball, it's five or six yards, no matter what. Just keeps the, puts his pads down and just keeps driving him. Every time it's two or three guys for the Indians trying to make the tackle, so wear them down, wear them down, and you know maybe uh, you know, they, they bounce them to the outside with Sintero, and off they go. Sincata, I'm sorry. Dartmouth isn't very beefy up front. Not very physically strong, and some of the assistant coaches had some concern about it. Sincata keeps, got himself the first down. Just as you said that, the staying oh, offensive line two, just pushed the Dartmouth defensive line back about four yards off the ball there, and somebody lost their helmet there. Yep. Nice block by number 75 there, and pushing back, and nothing fancy, just right at you.
first and ten Spartans. Sin Carter tried to sneak it, and he was being tackled by half the Indian defense. Jacob Lancaster, first, first guy to make contact with him. Lancaster was in the backfield real quick on that ball. So Sin Carter must see something when he gets up to the line of scrimmage. They must have some quarterback call. Where he sees the A-gap or maybe the one of the backers playing off the ball a little bit. He must see something at the line of scrimmage to run a sneak on first down. Try sure. to catch him off guard, maybe a quick count. Yeah, I'm not sure that's called from the sideline. Might be you're on your own, kid. If you see something, do it. They're going to throw out the same pass they did prior. This time they completed along the far sideline. Down to the 44-yard line. It's a dangerous Prince pass. On the reception. He's the play by number 11, that was Mike. a dangerous pass. We'll look on. Fendel. It looks like he's the injured player for Dartmouth. Maybe a cramp. It looks like they're looking at his leg, but made the right read on it. Just missed the tackle, and but you know he's. Good news for Dumbass, they're seeing. Can we run that back. They're seeing the pass is coming and trying to make the play on the ball quickly, which is nice to see. But we run it back. Nice and slow, fellas. If we could slow it down right here. Watch Fenno come up. No wrap up. You just can't tackle like that in the open field. Eyes up, wrap them up. Well, you can't hit somebody when you can't see them. Right. You just can't. Throw yourself at somebody. Sorry about that, folks. Watching live, sometimes we try to talk to the truck and we may push the wrong button or two or three, and you may hear some of the backdrop, how games are produced. And sometimes we like to look at the replay. So in a play like that, Andrew, you know, you could throw Stang for a three or four yard loss. And little plays like that add up. Missed tackles in a tight seven to six game. Both teams seem incapable of scoring quickly. Other than Abreu's 92 yard dash. Since then, Dartmouth hasn't done much on offense either. No, and I think, you know, again, Dartmouth, you know, the coaching staff, they're young and they're athletic, but you have to be able to <coughs> stop and, and understand that kind of play. You're in the open field one-on-one. -on -one. You can't go 100 miles an hour and miss the play. That would have been a nice loss for the Dartmouth defense. They unfortunately it turned into a gain. you got to keep your feet. you got to keep your head up. And, you know, unfortunately, every cornerback in the NFL tackles that way, yeah, and everybody exactly. wants to be that guy. And, you know, take them off his pins, which is fine, but if your eyes are down, your head is down, you're not going to tackle anybody. And I'm sure the coaching staff is going to tell him that exactly tomorrow or Monday, whenever they watch the film, of, you know, great job getting to the ball, but you got to be able to see the guy making the catch. Third and a long six here for Sin Cotta. Who do you think they gave it to? The big fella. Big boy. Golden. This time the Indians stand him up. Whistle blue. Balls out. By Michael Golden. He's first met on the play by number Golden 77. Golden may have got back at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard gain. Now they're going to look at fourth There's down. No way that's a squat. That's not the squat. That's terrible. Oh. That's terrible. <laughs> Coach Zexter. Yeah, Coach Zexter a little fired up here. And he's right. Yeah. Be. Well, the ball came out. I don't know if the I don't know if they blew the whistle. I don't know what happened, but the ball came did come out. So I don't know if the referees didn't think the ball was dead or, but the ball definitely was a little bit forward from here. It looks like where the play was blown dead. So here's the mascot, Bishop Stang Spartans. The Indian coaches still humming about the spot, and they're right. Gave him an extra yard and a half. So we got a new quarterback in. 14 is in. I don't know where. Oh, the 
Sincata's on the sideline getting stretched out here. Oh, and the ball is loose on the ground. Quarterback picks it up, and he's got himself a first down. Back up quarterback, Dominic Cavallo. First snap, he drops it, picks it up, makes himself a play. Yeah, I mean, lucky break for Sting. It was one of those things that Coach Golden talked about. The ball goes on the ground. Luckily for them, the ball bounced back to, uh, to, Cav to Cavallo, Cavallo and uh, picked up the first down. It was almost like the Dartmouth defense kind of stopped for a second and seen the ball on the ground, and everyone ran to the ball, and Cavallo found himself a little game. Time he hands to Golden. Golden rips it for about a seven-yard gain down inside the 20. A lot of cramping going on here. Both sides, just both sides. I do like the way Golden runs here. Kind of just lets the ball go, spins with the ball, just doesn't let doesn't let anybody really get a good lick on him. And that's part of the reason why he's falling forward, getting that momentum and getting five, six yards of whack. Cavallo in there at the quarterback spot. This time it's Gomes. Cavallo. Cavallo, excuse me, off the ball pick. So Cavallo's come off the bench, fumbled, picked it up, made a play, and now like makes way, another one. I like the way Cavallo runs it. Stays low, stays behind his blockers. You can't really get to him. Run behind the big man, number 15, doing it all. Looks like Sincata's getting ready to try to come back in here, too. Timeout is called by Dartmouth High. Sincata's up on his feet, stretching out. And I think we were discussing at halftime that the Indian defensive front and backers are athletic, but they're not physically big and they're having a woeful time at the line of scrimmage. This is the second string quarterback. Everyone's arm tackling. Well good for Cavallo though. I mean you in practice he probably doesn't get a ton of reps and first play in fumbles and probably jittery and nervous and now he's settled in a little bit and smart man staying behind uh, Matthew Golden on the run and Kind of tough to get to when Matthew uh, Michael Golden is your lead blocker for you. So, but both sides looking tired. Both you know, both trainers are stretching kids out on the sidelines right now. Dartmouth training across the way, and uh, Sincata's still getting stretched out here. Looks like he's ready to come back in. But uh, it's one thing to play in the Jamborees for a half and get guys in the game, and get some reps and practice and scrimmages. But when you're out here playing 65 plays and you know everybody's running the ball, it's tough to to get the juices going for the first game of the year. First and goal for Bishop Stang. Ball just inside the 10. Cavallo brings him out. Gomes and Golden. Cavallo keeps it. Oh, and ball. the ball is out. And they're going to say he's down. They're going to say he's down. It's a nice open field tackle there by Ray Gremlick. Either Ray Gremlick or is it Graham White? It's one of the two ones that were out there. That Gremlick, yep. Ooh. Oh, that ball's Ooh, out. that ball is out. That ball's out. That ball is definitely out. Second goal from the seven. So Stan catches a break. Replay clearly shows the ball was out. Second and goal. Golden. In the middle of the defense gets nothing. Graham White rolls off the pile. Eli Johnson, big bottom of the pile. Third down. And goal from the seven. As close as they are, this is tough for Sting's offense to really get something going. I mean, can't really get much to the outside here. Everyone's kind of jammed right at the line. Looks like uh, Mike Golden coming out. Well-deserved break for him. So now you got a backup quarterback, and you got a 
second string running back in the game. Golden worked on cramping here on the near sideline. Fernandes in there to take his spot. Cavallo, whistles blow. Offside. Approachment no. called against the Indians. And Andrew, how many mistakes have they made throughout this game just giving free yards to the Spartans? Especially on third downs, they've had a couple mishaps on third third downs. That was a big big mishap there. And I didn't I didn't see the ball snapped. It looked like they called that before the ball was even snapped, which is most of the officials will tell somebody back up, get off the line. I don't understand that, what, what just happened there, because he didn't snap the ball. Fernandes and Gomes are the runners. Here's Cavallo, rolling right, still on his feet, gonna be tackled from behind. Wonderful play by the Spartans, JT Sherrier. And he's down. And there's a flag. And this sometimes happy. This sometimes happens in high school where it's all a great of a sudden play by Chari to get from where get he was. Flag happy. Oh yeah. Chari, here he comes. Nice play to get in the backfield and shoestring tackle. Wasn't going much further. Looked like uh, Dylan Gomes was also there to try to make the tackle. If not, it looks like a holding as well on Stang. So Dartmouth will take that and back him up to the 15. This period's flying by. 47 seconds to go in the third. Still a 7-6 game. Dartmouth trying to defend his final 15 yards. Golden back in. Sincata back in at the quarterback spot. Sincata rolls. Here comes the rush. Gets rid of it. And falls incomplete. Almost picked off in the Indian secondary. That was Burgo. Donovan Burgo almost had the interception there. So two running teams. Now Spartans have to throw the football from the 15. It's a risky pass you take there. Chari again in the backfield, and a lot of people in a small space, and Berg almost came up with a big play there. Fourth and goal from the 15. Stang trails by one, and they're going to kick a field goal. Nolan Rogers. Oh, he moved early. Spartans move, kick is up. And the kick is good. So Stang takes the lead. Looked like the left side of the Spartan <laughs> offensive line moved. Didn't matter. Rogers comes in and drills it. Great kick Just by that inside kid. By, this inside the left upright. You can see number, I believe it's number 60 on the left side of the line. Steps early before the ball snapped. There we Absolutely. I'd have to say that was about a five minute period of, I would say, uh, I don't want to say it nowadays because you can't criticize anyone, but some of these calls turn games around. Well, it's just amazing that the, the eyesight some of these referees have. I can see a holding from 45 yards away. And well, that was obvious. You can't but see. Uh, that's the second time the Sting line has moved in this game, clearly, and nothing has been called. But good for the young man, Rogers. Yeah, hell of Comes a kick. in off the bench. Good call by Coach Golden. He's got the team ahead, 9-7. to seven. 
And it looks like an onside kick. And the ball is loose, and Stang has recovered it. Momentum changer. Uh, it's one of those tricky plays where you got to know where you're on the field because if the ball is going 10 yards, the Dartmouth kids shouldn't be running up at the ball. Let the ball come to you. Let it get 10 yards. Or get, get your feet set. Tough play for Jalen Adams to make on a tough hop, but it's one of those plays you got to be ready for and, you know, Stop mistaking. Anything is possible. Kind of like those Fairhaven games with Rudy Bogle as his coach. Anything is possible at any time. I'm not sure if that was on purpose or not. Um, I was <laughs> questioning it myself. First and ten stank from midfield. Sent Carter back in. And he pushes forward down to the 45 yard line. Gain of five. Ball is carried by Lucas Sincata. That's going to take us to the end He's of the, the third. Setting ball game going After on here from Spartan Village at the end of three completed. It's Bishop Stang High School five. nine, Dartmouth High School seven. And that will the quarter, score, and I'm sure if you're the Dartmouth five. coaching staff, Andy, the last thing you want to see is your defense on the field. They put up a great goal line stand a moment ago. Kid comes off the bench, nails a 25 yard field goal. Put the Spartans ahead. Yeah, it's a tough spot, but I think if you're the Dartmouth coaching staff, you gotta relay the message that, you know, you had a nice stand, they, you, you got a, they got away with a couple fumbles, they almost had an interception. They're in the right spots trying to make the right plays. It's just a little difficult for Dumb to finish off those drives and you know it's interesting they didn't go for an early field goal however they decided to kick a 20 something yard 30 yard field goal 37 uh, 37 yard field by goal. the official score 37 yards well, that would have been good from 40 45 <laughs> So we start the fourth battle of the old Slocum Road. Longtime rivals. Spartans and Indians going at it. They switch sides of the field. Second down five for Stang. Does Dartmouth have another defensive stand in there? This is exactly what Coach Golden wanted in this game. Here's what they're good at. They're going to run it down the throat for as long as they can. That's Tyron Gomes. He picks up the first. Well, it's another guy, Tyron Gomes. Hasn't got the ball much, but when he's gotten it, he's getting eight to ten yards. Who do you run behind? Matt Golden. Just get in the way there. First and ten in, uh, Spartans. And Carter wrapped up in the backfield. Nice play by Michael Figueroa. Mike Figueroa. Very nice play. Very, the very lucky they didn't get called for almost eight. a horse car there, but he had the jersey, not the back of the shoulder pad. So that 37. was second down, eight to go. Clock ticking, approaching the 11 minute mark in this long time rivalry. Stang Dartmouth. Thanks for joining us. Jim Thompson alongside Andy Thompson. Golden. He's got room. Balls Fumble. loose. Balls out. Dartmouth jumps on it. Dartmouth. Dylan and Gomes. They have it. Looks like Dylan Gomes jumped on that ball. There's a fumble on the play recovered by Dartmouth. And we have an injured Spartan. Let's look on. Just one of those fluke plays. I mean, Mike Golden's been the go-to guy all, all game, and 
It's one of those, look like just kind of helmet hit a ball or just uh, somebody popped it out by accident. Let's look at it again. We'll slow it down, fellas. Good. This kid has had a magnificent game. It just looked like it was one of those trying to fight for an extra yard or two and the ball just kind of popped loose. And Dartmouth finally recovered a fumble, and that was something that Golden talked about before the game of you can't turn the ball over. And part of the biggest spot in the game, unfortunately, the go-to guy had his first mistake of the game. Just a fluke. I didn't really see anybody even hit the ball. That young man doesn't make too many mistakes. Son of a coach. We're in a tight one here from the UJ County Stadium here on Slocum Road. Michael Golden. We were stretching him out earlier. It's been a hot summer here in uh, Dartmouth, Massachusetts. A lot of these teams practicing in the heat, but got to stay hydrated. And these staffs, especially the training staff, for all these high schools up here, are on top of this. But still, it's a hot night. And you're going full tilt in practice. A lot of times, you're in shells, no pads. You don't go full tilt. Now you get in game conditions and you start to cramp a bit. Yeah, even in the scrimmage games, you know, there's a lot of stoppages. It's not like a game time situation, you know. It's Thomas is going to throw the halfback pass. They get a man out here. And it's oh. incomplete. Pass was intended for Jalen Adams. Nice play by him. Yeah, he's back, he's back there in coverage. He had Adams early. Great play by Yasbek to get back there and break that play up and get a hand on the ball. Just a tiny bit underthrown, but Jalen had him by a couple yards off the bat. Second and 10 Dartmouth. Coach White, little trickery. Three receiver set for the Indians. One back. And Morris gives it to the first man through. And that's Abreu. Might have picked up a yard. In the backfield by number 21, Adrian Cardoza. Well, Fenno can throw, we know that. We've seen this in other games where he. Just a tad bit underthrown, and nice play by Jalen Adams to actually break that play up and become a defender instead of the, the intended receiver. Could have been a big swing for State. See the Dartmouth High School trainer out there, another young man just cramping up, staying sideline down in front of us all game long. Kids working with the trainers as well. And when you get one of those things, you think you're never going to walk again, right? You're in so much pain, it's like. What? Curl those toes up, bend that foot. And you're better in a few minutes. Do we get cramps riding in golf carts? Uh, I do. <laughs> I get a cramp just watching the kid on the field. Third down and 10. Morris in there at the quarterback spot. Morris looking, looking. Here comes the rush. Got a man here near side. Completes the pass across the 35 and out to the 36-yard line. That's Graham White on the reception, but he's well short. He's stopped on the plate by number three, Tyrone Gomes. Nice Gomes job by, on the tackle. Nice play by Nico, looking at his reads. Graham White was three. open to try to get upfield as fast as he can on that hitch play and try to make something, maybe a missed tackle, but get within 
striking distance of uh, fourth and about a long two maybe from here. Yep, they got to get it to the 39-yard 39, uh, 39 line. And they're at the, just at the 37. Home crowd on its feet. Morris, Abreu, first down, Moore. Across the 45, out to the 46-yard line. Nice play out of that diamond set for the, for the Indians. It's a play they haven't run too much to Louie tonight, but nice, nice time, nice call. I haven't seen many jet sweeps either. I'm waiting for one of those to come through. Tyron Combs made the stop for the Spartans in the secondary. Well, something you and I talked about before the game is Dartmouth's offense has always had a good fullback. You see Jason Martin throughout this game getting out and getting a, a helmet on a helmet, getting blocks for the running backs early. Morris turns, hands it off. Solid run there. By a new back in there for the Indians, Ray Gremlick. Gain of seven. Second and short. Clock rolling to the towards the eight minute mark. Fourth quarter. Verna Bonburner from Spartan Village. Morris picks up a bad snap. Looking to make something out of nothing. Too many of that tonight for the Indians, Andrew. Very lucky for the Indians that ball didn't roll too far, but smart play by Nico to try to just get on it and get something. Don't don't try to make a foolish play and make something out of nothing. Just get back to the line. And, you know, it's two down territory, I think, for the Indians anyways at this point. So. A good look at Morris. Time and look for the Indians. Abreu looks for room. Breaks the first tackle. It spins out close to the first down. He's going to be just short. Just short. Same play they just ran to Louis Freitas there. Oh, that was Louis Freitas. Excuse Ball's me. Carried by number two, Louis Freitas. He's stopped on the play by Lucas Sincada. It's good blocking out front. Good blocking. Just keep his legs pumping and very close to that first down mark. It's from here. It looks pretty, that pretty might have close. got a favorable spot. We haven't had many breaks in this one. Let's see, they're going to stretch it out. First down. And that's a first down. Now that was a favorable spot. It was, but Louis did the right thing, kept his legs driving, kept, you know, finished the play. He didn't try to stop and go backwards or he fell forward. He fell, you know, with, with momentum forward. These referees, they got great eagle eyes. They saw that spot from a mile away. <laughs> Can't see offensive lineman moving, but they saw that. Turn and hand it to Gremlick. Ball's carried by number 21, Ray Gremlick. Ray picked Stop up a yard, second and long. Clock rolling here. Just under seven minutes to play in the ball game. Stang clinging to a 9-7 lead. So you can see some of the Stang kids now. They're looking gas. Dartmouth looked gas on defense. Oh, these Stang kids are all looking now like they're sucking wind. And Dartmouth doesn't know what they're doing on this play. Jalen Adams was running across the formation. Looking at his coaching staff like, what am I doing? Yeah. Had to call a timeout. The hands to the sky is never a good thing when you got two guys looking at each other doing it with the same, where do I go, what do I do? Hey guys in the truck, you ready for a fan of the game? Got one picked out? We do this, we, s <laughs> we do something with the cameras and we try to find a, a fan, not the football team. Here we go, which one you like? Zoom in on them. Or her. Okay. The young fella right there. Right there, that guy. No, nope, turn a little bit to the left. A little bit left. A little bit left. There, that there he is, right there. Yep. Coach Sexter's dad. 
<laughs> you win a dozen donuts from Stop and Shop. <laughs> go in and put it on Andy's account. There you go. Second down long. I'm a Sunrise guy now. Morris, ball fake, looking, throws into coverage. Incomplete. That was a forced throw into coverage. Louis. Jalen Adams. Adams in there. Yeah, Adams was the intended receiver. It's two, it's two plays Jalen Adams has saved interceptions, becoming a defender. Had him in the flat, it looked like two. Nice play by the state defender, but you know, it's one of those things you practice, you know, for you gotta go get it. So Jalen being aggressive to go get it also helped make break up that play. Third and eight for Dartmouth. 624 clock stop. Indians break the huddle. Four receiver set. Kremlick pushes the pile forward, but he's well short. We're gonna bring up fourth down at about four. by number 21, Ray Granlich, stopped on the play by number 21, Aiden Cardoza. Nice play to Even with that jet sweep, though, it just looks like the Dartmouth offense is just a hair off. That jet sweep is usually something that they, they have down to the to the second. It just looks like it was uh, Andrews coming in motion with the jet sweep. It looked like he was almost late getting there and didn't really sell the whole fake, which is Dartmouth's bread and butter. Well, the Indians looking at four and about five. There's Morris in the middle. Looked like Stang jumped. Morris pitches it here near side and deflected. Great play here by Eli Aquila. Indians had an open man and nice defensive play. He had him if he just put a little bit more air under it and a little bit further downfield, but great play by the Stang defense. It will be those are things I think that Nico will work on as time goes. This is his first game as a, as a varsity starter. You're better off throwing it a little bit longer and letting your guy go make a play than trying to force it there and you know, or making a perfect pass. So now we've got 5.30 left to go in the game. and Depends on who's in the game for staying. A lot of these guys are sucking wind with cramps and whatnot. So... I don't think Stan can go three and out here and hope for the best. Coach Golden looking on. Said Carter in there, quarterback. He struggled with cramps. Back in there. First and ten, Stang. Fakes to belly. Loses a yard. Ball is carried by Lucas Sincata. He stopped the play by number 77, Jacob Lancaster. Lancaster in there for the Indians. No gain on the play. Lancaster signed himself a nice little game with the defensive line. Gets pressure in there. And I think if Stan gets one first down, they're going to be pretty close to getting this down to nothing. Under five to go. Run it out to the 40 yard line. That's Tyron Gomes. He comes off with a slight limp. Uh, he picked up four. They're looking down now at third down and long six, perhaps seven. This is the game for Dartmouth's defense right here. They're already down to 420 left to go in the game. Dennis is taking his time, getting the play in. Carter, quick throw, he's got a oh. man open and just over the outstretched hands of Prince. Wow. 
That was a break for Dartmouth, but I mean that could have that could have been an easy six if you put it on his number. Just out of the stretched arms of Prince. So the Indian defense holds. The story still to be told with 352 with a stop clock. Andrews and Abreu back deep. Andrews to the near side. Abreu to the top of your screen. Yeah, they get up to the line of scrimmage, and Dennis wants a timeout. Dammuth with a very young team has shown themselves well tonight. However, a few major penalties, a few miscues here and there. Everything you would expect from a team only returning three starters, I believe, from last year's team and losing a ton of offense from last year's team. Everybody knew it was going to be tough to replace Kelly Marks. I mean, I think the kids who played tonight have done a nice job. It's their first game as the season goes on. Win or lose tonight, I think there's some momentum to build on. Um, it's just the small things. You know, they'll clean up. It's, you know missing a block or a fumble or a missed assignment. So it's those things that can catch up to your special teams. Um, I'd watch a fake here. Beautiful kick. Fair catch. At the 28-yard line, Jared Abreu. So Diamond is going to get a crack at it here with good field position. First and 10. They trail 9-7-3, 46 left to go in this one. Big crowd here at Spartan Village. Thank you people from around the world tuning in. Former graduates of both schools. A lot of friends in Florida, in the Villages, Florida, tuning into this game. Hello to you all down there. Mrs. Golden, this is a special treat for you. Hope you're enjoying it. Get yourself well. Morris tries to escape. Can't do it. Colin McCarthy, nice play by him. They wrap up and get him down to the ground quickly. Loss of four on the play. Again, it's one of those things with Nico. He's trying to get his reads, but he doesn't. It's not pulling the trigger right away. He's, he's hanging on to it just a hair too long, trying to make a play with his feet instead of making a throw. Morris, here comes the middle screen. It's caught, and Abreu is knocked down immediately at the 25-yard line. No gain. Nice play by the staying defense. Nice call on the staying defense being prepared for that play. That's a play Dominic has run tonight, and in the past that's gotten them 15, 20 yards a pop, and that, that could have been a big break. It almost looked like the receiver was ahead of the lineman at that point in time, which Maybe that was afraid of alignment downfield up to the last time they're in that play. Graham White to the near side. Morris out of the gun. Rolls near side. Still rolling. Throws it. Got a man. Completes it at the 30. Breaks the tackle. He's got the 35. Still on his feet. Run out of bounds, but well short. On the reception was Marcus Andrews. Uh, referee on the far side has a very favorable spot for the Dartmouth Indians. They're going to spot it around the 37-yard line. This pass, taking what he gets. Andrews is the speedster, and that's one of the guys they you know, look for on a jet sweep down the road. Well, this may be the ball game for the Indians. Fourth and two. They run Abu to the left in this formation. And they try it again. And Abreu's got room. He's got a first down. Abreu's still on his feet. Abreu down the far sideline. And he's tackled around a horse collar tackle. 
And a late flag, I think, came in. I don't know if there's a flag, but how did he miss that? We can see it from 100 yards away. Great run by Mike, Louis Freitas. Michael Golden in on the tackle. You could see this play coming to run it all night long. It's great vision, gets to the outside and just get to that marker. Once he got to the marker, he was gone. Watch you could 15. see here. Tack him around the net. I mean, you can see a holding call from somewhere, but you you can't see the kid's neck being ripped. And the ripped. last thing Michael Golden is a, is a dirty play. No, no. He's it's a, making it's a, a play. Yeah, no, but it's, it's not his fault. It's the referees to enforce right. that rule. He's making a play. Morris rolls. Throws incomplete near side. Stops the clock. Morris Michael Golden's had a one heck of a game. I'm more impressed that Michael Golden... Ran him down from that yeah. far away. Yeah, <laughs> me too. That was a game-saving tackle. And if Stain comes up to win this game, that's a play that's going down as the play of the game no matter what happens because it wasn't for Mike Golden. He I was thought, gone. I thought there was a late flag that came in. There's a football that keeps being thrown in the distance that right. I keep thinking it's a flag too. Second and ten. Indians run it to the <laughs> left side. That's Abreu. So as much as we've given the referees grief for staying jumping, Dartmouth just got away with the early jump. <laughs> Ball's carried by number five, Jared Clock is running here with 1.33 to go. You see the right left side of the Dartmouth line. Stop on the play by a host of Spartan Jump right, right there. It will be third and nine from the Bishop saying Third down and nine now for the Indians. Nico Morris. Ball fake. He's got time. Throws. End zone. Oh. Oh. Almost caught on the rebound. Two Indians down there. Three Spartans. Ball's incomplete. Louis Freitas was down there, tried to catch it on the rebound. Now here's the ball game. And you come into this game, Andrew, knowing both teams run the football. Their weakness is passing. And here's the Indians with a brand new quarterback this year. Never played before. Under the lights, opening game. All the pressure in the world on him. Let's see if he can make a play. Yeah, I mean, it's... That's why you want to play quarterback, right? Yep. Dotman's going to kick a field goal here. So the Indians going to try to win it on a field goal. Louis Freitas got, got Louis the boot. Freitas, he can kick it. He's got leg. Good snap. Good snap. Blocks. Golden. Good block. Den Michael Golden with the block. Michael Golden with the block. And he's running loose down the sideline. Golden finally tackled inside the 20-yard line. What a way to end it here at Spartan Village. As a proud dad, as Dennis Golden just gave his son a big hug. Right through the middle. Who else? <laughs> great play, great game by Michael Golden. Golden saved the game on defense twice oh. in the last four minutes. Wow. I think there's a nice young lady down there in Charlotte. Must be so proud right about now. Coach Golden's mom. Look at that. Three Spartans crashing through the interior line of the Indians. And I know we've talked a lot about Mike Golden tonight, but that's a smart play to get the ball and just stuff it rather than try to do something silly, tackle the kid. Just block it. Nothing fancy, just end the game. Time for a couple of more plays.
Fans starting to pile out, try to beat the traffic. Big win here tonight for Coach Dennis. The other thing too is it's good for these kids. Last year when they played Dartmouth, they got kind of handled. The, the offense struggled, they were young kids, they were a bunch of sophomores. Dartmouth was a veteran team. Good for these kids to come back, play hard, get the win. Yep, just get right down to the ball. I mean, the heady play by not only does he, Dan Yazbek. Not, is he down, not only is he down on all fours, the hustle. There's, there's the ball, rolls right to him. Now they're in victory formation. And Carter takes the knee. Time for one more play. Look across the way, saddened group of youngsters for Dammoth High School. Basically a completely new team. Showed themselves well here tonight on the road here at uh, the UJ Kearney Stadium. Great crowd under the lights. Kids showed themselves well, both sides. Both, I mean it was, I think for staying, this is a great momentum builder for your program tonight, for the season, you get on a good start, you beat a top, Dartmouth team. It was a higher division than you, a nice home victory. For Dartmouth, you're young. You had some good plays and you had some, some mistakes. And it's nothing that you have to revamp, it's just clean up the, you know, Clean up the high passes, clean up a fumble. You know, so it's both teams have a lot of building to do, which is nice to see, and hopefully both teams can have a successful season. Well, when we we came into this game, we knew both teams could run and not pass very well. That was pretty much proven. Abreu got the scoring on a 92-yard scamper for the Indians. And they didn't do much after that offensively. They, they had their chances, but I would think four or five major infractions against them, costly mistakes, and Golden was just all over the field here tonight. Reminds me of the running back Dartmouth had last year. Absolutely. Same type of play. And he just controlled the game. Game-saving tackle in the final two minutes. Some may have said it was high around the head, no call, great hustle play. Dartmouth forced a kick. Louis Freitas has a great leg. He can kick from 35, 40 yards. And what happens? The interior of the line, in offensive line disintegrates. He's Three kids He's in the he, he, he was a game wrecker. Yeah, absolutely, perfectly set. Yes. But when you see three kids get the snap count, you lose the ball game. But who would have thought coming in, a field goal would win it in high school football? Yeah, I mean, it was a game almost a side around special teams. Yeah. A, a mistake or whatever onside kick you want to say that was. Yeah, true, right. Field goal, block field goal. I mean, not many games we've seen over the years of three special teams plays are the difference of the game. Well, there's your final score. We don't have to tell you, but we will. Final score here from the UJ County Stadium. Bishop Stang. Nine, Dartmouth High School seven. Stang starts the season off at one and zero. The Indians zero and one. Folks on YouTube, we thank you very much for tuning in. It's been our pleasure. If you folks in Dartmouth, this game will be replayed throughout the week. In Indian fans, Thursday night at the stadium, Greater New Bedford Regional Volk Tech. Yes, I said Thursday night. Get your tickets. Come on out. Support this young, talented team. They showed us a lot here tonight. A lot of new kids on the field for Coach White. Seen a lot of football. My time broadcasting these games. Couldn't be more proud of this young team. They showed well. I think they'll have a solid season, as Andrew said. With games, with repetition, comes success. And I think they got a great staff across the way. So that'll do it. Your final thought? Just like I said, I think both teams have a, can leave this game with positive outcomes, no matter what the out score of the game was. Staying is going to build off this victory. They know they have a couple of great players that can can change the game for them this year. Last year didn't look like that. Dartmouth, they're looking for that game changer. They have Abreu, 
who can break it. They just got to have more of those breakout plays that kind of got muffled on the offensive side tonight. So things to work on for Dartmouth, but, you know, staying, they should be rolling if they, you know, can carry this momentum forward. I want to thank Dartmouth Community Media, Peter Chase in charge. Great job by the camera people, audio people, replay. We thank you so much for getting this game live on YouTube. Final score here from Spartan Village. Bishop staying nine, Dartmouth high seven. For my sidekick, Andrew Thompson, I'm Jim Thompson. Until next time, so long, everybody.